big ass drop ones I get like they do and then when I get off after I act like they don't hurt but then they really do and I just feel like a dummy Okay, perfect. Oh, that color on the tea looks great. That color on the tea looks beautiful. Tasteful. Uh, you want to give me a clap to kind of sing? Go ahead. Just say interview. Take one and take a clap. Uh, Just clap in front of the mic. It's okay. You want me to do it? I got you. I say interview. Take one. Beautiful. Okay. All right. Hi everyone. And action. Okay, beautiful. Hi everyone. Welcome back to Half Path Midnight. Today we're in a little bit of a different scenery. We are actually at my guest today, Stephen Calderon. We are in his studio. Uh, Stephen, uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. What type of art do you create? Hi. Um, Hello. <laughs> I'm Stephen. I make acrylic paintings. Um, yeah. Is uh, it mostly like visual art that you accomplish? Yeah, I don't do anything other than make paintings. Mm. So when you make like your paintings and stuff, when did it really start for you? Did you start as like a child, like six years old, 16 years old? Was there a certain class? I mean, when I met my mom a long time ago, uh, she used to make me watercolor. Really? So that was like a long time ago. I was like seven or something like that. She made you watercolor. Yeah, she just was like, like, oh, it's cool. It's artsy. She used to want it's just something to do while she was gone at work when I was visiting her. But okay. um, I kind of took abstract painting serious in like uh, 2014, 2015. Uh, mm, okay. I took a college class and learned the elements of design to abstract painting. And I just... And you just took it from there? You progressed from there? Oh, well, yeah. I didn't finish school, but I learned what i <laughs> right you, you learned you you took what you needed from school right mm -hmm. and then it helped you build like the habits as like the visual artist that you are now yeah exactly what's something that you picked up from school that you like that you credit a lot to school like you know if had i not went to college and took the classes for a bit i wouldn't have gained this i wouldn't use the elements of design i also wouldn't know how to use uh the tools because like it's just I they wouldn't, just give it to you you, you know, know like, she let you my professor let me know like like let everybody know it's an intro to design class and so you know, just let you know how to run the paint better how just different tricks and tricks and tips and uh she's actually she's a abstract artist herself her name's leslie brown okay, and she beautiful. makes art and you could she has gallery showings and stuff and so she had a lot of tricks of the trade to to teach and now there are a lot of like visual artists in the area what are some things that kind of separate you as like a visual artist like is there a certain something that you add in your paintings that a lot of other artists might not or is there what's your flair i don't know um that's a tough question because somewhere on the planet somebody's could probably make in something that looks so similar to my and that's shit. possible that's possible am i allowed to swear <laughs> you're good you're good okay. you're all good i'm, yeah. I'm sorry um <laughs> There are artists around the world and like some people can fall into the same categories, but like you, like you're Steven and you do your own thing. What, what are some stuff that helps you do your own thing? Um, Cause like for some people, they might only use the color red or they might only use like the color green or they have it somewhere in their painting. And it's like, Oh, I know their painting cause they got this in it. You know? I always use like the element of design harmony with this. Like, um, I use this like three little squiggle lines that meet together to make one line to kind of like always make everything in the back kind of harm. I used my hands 40 times right now. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, it, it brings everything together. Yeah, I guess. And that's just, I learned as an element of design. Um, uh, I was going to say really quick, um, we, there are some like noise in the background. Do you want to give a little bit of uh, insight as to like where this oh, like loft studio is that you have the here? The noise in the background. That's for the aesthetics. Yeah. Um, my very good friends uh, run a tire business and suspension. They work on cars, you know, they're beautiful. And they uh, had this second story to their shop, which is right downstairs. And I've always, uh, not always, but since they've been open pretty much for the last two years, I've uh, rented about half of the space that we're in right now. That we're sitting in right yeah, now. Yeah, kind of like exactly where we're sitting. And uh, it only went about, I think that's like 10, 15 feet to that wall over there. 
So it was just this little strip and um, I would paint back here. This was their uh, used tire storage before they decided to recycle this them all. This whole upper Oh area. yeah, it was packed. Okay. Like when you'd come up the stairs, everything up until right here about was just wall of tires, like eight feet tall. Interesting. Yeah. And so I would just lean up canvases up on everything and just paint up here. Um, and, you know, and I finally decided uh, where I was living before that time to move. Well, cool. that's beautiful. No, like we're going to walk around here in a little bit. But when I was like first walking around, I was like, you know what? This is like beautiful because some artists would have to drive like from their actual house or their home over to a studio. And then like that bridge in between kind of separates your headspace. So like, have you always been living where you made your art? Yeah. Like even not including here, you've always like wherever you live, like you made that your studio basically. Yeah, everywhere. I mean, I didn't really have the means to go rent a studio. Um, yeah. This kind of. Oh, sorry. You're all good. This kind of worked out just really well. It's a friend's shop and, you know, we collaboratively pay the rent. There's another person that rents out a little section to work on his car. And it's like three, four of us that all kind of like pile on to pay the rent in this whole warehouse and just it's worked teamwork. out. Yeah, it's teamwork. Financial teamwork. And then I just, yeah. you know, put the bill to close it off here. You know what I mean? Just we're, we're under construction right now. You'll see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With uh. Even though you're under construction, did you already have the vision in your head? Like as you were living here and just half of it, you're like, you know what? This is, I can see myself living here and creating more of my art in this space. I knew that this is where I like to make my paintings. And when okay. I was looking into living somewhere else, I was just tacking on my, my daily costs and my budget and my monthly costs and paying this extra rent in a studio just seemed like something I should cut out if I was going to go get my own apartment because rates are crazy right now. Rents really high. So Speak if I was going to go move into my own brand new apartment, it was just didn't make, didn't make any sense to keep the studio and I couldn't, couldn't give it up. And yeah, so I, I, I just you. asked, I said, is it okay if I just pay more money mm -hmm. and pay to put a wall up and, you know, situated just, for living. This, this is you. And you he know? said, yeah. that's fine. And I've been just working on building it up and, it's going to be a nice place to live by next weekend, hopefully. I'm happy for you. With, um, man, what was I going to say? I was going to say, like, when you, when you first came here, how were you introduced to this space? Uh, just, he's my very good friend that, that owns uh, BC Garage downstairs. BC. It's his okay. initials, Brandon Chidez. So, Brandon Chidez. Thank you, Brian. Brandon. Thank you, Brandon. <laughs> Jesus. <gasps> Brandon Chidas, right downstairs, BC Garage. If you uh, need your tires, make an appointment, BC Garage on Instagram. Beautiful. Speaking of rates, I was going to say, have you sold your art pieces? Yeah. Really? Okay. Uh, where have you, like, how did you go about, like, actually selling your art pieces? Because sometimes for an artist, that's like a big stepping stone for them. It's where you take it from, like, something that I've created in my room or, like, my studio or, like, something that I put onto paper and now this is me selling it how I mean, did that begin you just gotta you just gotta talk to people i guess i mean the the first time i sold the painting i uh, was at school and it wasn't for much money and she just put it in rcc gallery and somebody wanted to buy it i guess or some something like that i don't know she told me about it, it she facilitated it okay so that's usually how it goes but in the world of selling things i mean you gotta talk to a gallery see if they have wall space and sometimes pay a fee to get your stuff in there it'll hang for a while and if somebody wants to buy it they'll buy it if they don't you just take your shit back i mean where, where are some places that you've like where are excuse me where are some galleries that you've held up your lehman work? space in chinatown um Ooh. los angeles uh okay. i mean i've shown my paintings in montclair with you guys Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, at the Iacom twice studio. now. Mm -hmm. um, I show my paintings uh, in Pomona. Um, just had a show in Rancho at San Giorgio Winery. Um, okay, beautiful. Uh, wherever, wherever somebody wants to put them up, you know. I mean, yeah. I I started um, selling a lot more when I had uh, the gallery, and oh, I've actually been in LA one different time actually uh in 2017 i had a show in la and that's kind of like when i started being able to sell them more meeting a lot of people in la they see them on the wall they take you a lot more yeah, serious okay. and you're able to just chop it up with people I actually met a good guy named jared 
um, that bought one of my pieces off the wall at that first show in 2017. He was a really nice guy. Um, and he bought a couple more for me just because he met me there, you know, and followed my Instagram, just chatted with me. And we were both from Boston. And then you guys made a friendship and you guys came to here we are now, huh? Yeah. I mean, we don't really talk too much anymore, but that's just kind of like how you get the foothold in. Like, you just got to talk to people, market it yourself at this point. And maybe somebody wants to buy it, maybe they don't. But I mean, you just got to keep trying. I've, hold, I've held on to lots of pieces that I hope somebody maybe wants to buy. But Yeah. And it takes a lot of practice having to talk with people and making those connections. I get that. For you, uh, for you, Stephen, what do you define as success for the artist? Is it getting your art pieces out there? Is it having it be seen? Before, I didn't really mind uh, what happened. I just painted them. I like to make them. Hmm. Uh, right now, I'm focusing on a series of paintings that like means a lot to me, and I feel like I don't know if that sound this sounds pretentious, but I feel like it could mean a lot to the world. And I, I mean, currently my goal or whatever i would hope that somebody would want to show them in a big place maybe or if somebody wanted to acquire them and show them at whatever gallery they own that's a big time public gallery you know for i i would i would really like to show the paintings that i'm working on now um like in a museum like or in a section of a place that's for this do you have one a certain series. one do you have a certain museum in mind where you're like oh <sighs> I don't, I don't mind. Any, uh, any museum is fair not, game. And I mean, any, anybody that wants to show them that I, I feel like is nice. a lot of people because they, they, they mean, um, like they mean a lot to me and they're, they're really important. I think they, they could, um, they could be used in a lot of different ways and showed to the world and maybe inspire people in a different way because there's a lot of people making art and, it's it's a it's a it's, big c it looks it looks good and the videos of you making it look good and the presence you have on mm -hmm. instagram looks good well I'm but happy i mean for you. it doesn't doesn't really sound fulfilling all the time and so i like these paintings i'm kind of keeping really private and hoping to just show them when they're ready or when i have the means to rent a space out myself that's really big because you can always talk to a gallery and rent them yourself but it's another thing when it's like your own and, space and you can like curate it the way that you want to and have it be seen in a certain like certain light and everything. Exactly. Right? I get you. Well, you know what? With that said, I think that we should go ahead and take a tour of the place. I'm really excited to see it. I'm sure everyone else is really excited to see it too. Let's see what's going on over there. <laughs> Let's take a look. All right. So this is still under construction, you say, right? Yeah, because I mean, obviously there's no door. Okay. The door will go. The door will go in that. Okay. That little gap. Oh, that's cute. You have like your everyday carry stuff. Well, this car I roll around when I go get from the back because it moves. I keep my uh, chest of paintings in the back. I mean, of paint supplies in the back corner, oh. and then. I can just roll this to and from it, and then uh, I'll paint like on this all along this open wall. Oh, okay. So is this like your workstation right here? Yeah. Like your work well, what's, wall. What's to be done? Yeah. I'll mud the wall once everything's done. You know, I'll mud it and paint it, but I'll just paint it white. But for now, this is like what I'm working with when the people building it aren't here. And these are the usual supplies that you'd be using. Yeah, i right? I always have like a shitty palette. It's just a. It's just a plate from Target. Okay. You know the deal? Um, Are you, uh, sometimes it's hard for painters to remember to clean their brushes. Do you have your own habit right now? Of well, your yeah, if I ever, ever have anything too soaked, I use, uh, I use this Winsor Newton brush restorer. Yeah, you have to soak, you can soak the brush for like overnight, it'll come back to life if it's all good. And then after that, I just know. always wash my brushes in pink soap. And just use a brush cleaner. They sell these at like Michaels. It's just like a grate in the bottom of this. You can scratch it along. Oh, if so it doesn't work, so you don't have to like, like bang it on the side. If right? you don't have one, I use these a lot because the bottoms of them, you know, they have all these ridges. So you can just rub your paintbrush on the ridges. That's and a great step. Okay, out. beautiful. And then you slice the top off. You see, and it's like a perfect little thing. And mm -hmm. if you take that lid that you slice off and you put it back upside down, all your paintbrushes can stick straight into it. That's resourceful. This is. 
What do you have um, right here all wrapped up? Are these uh, works I'm, that you're going to have? This is a show you know? that was in Rancho uh, a few oh, this weekends was... ago. I just uh, wrap them all up when I transport them. So I'll wrap the smalls individually, and then I'll wrap them all to this. Now, which is I, two different paintings. I stand about like five seven on a good day, so this is like pretty big pieces right here, right? What's the what? How big has your pieces gotten? Uh, because I know this is not the max. This is, or is five it? feet tall. I have, I have some. I mean, they can get big, but not too much bigger. Ooh, okay. Oh, nice. This okay. is a working piece. But it can this one. It's probably taller than you. It is taller than me, but that's not too hard. Oh, no, it's about as tall. Five, seven. Yeah, I mean, around six feet. Okay, here, I'll help him grab. I always buy a. How would you store something like this? Because uh, I'll be too afraid to, like. If I'm still working on it, I really don't care because, like, if it gets dirty, you can always, like, touch it up. Okay. Um, and then if you're done with the painting, you could literally, if you're just being cheap, you could wrap these in furniture wrap, which is what I do with those. I buy furniture wrap from Lowe's. Okay. You could just wrap these in that if you can't, like, go buy plastic tubes. Because if you're using thick enough canvas, there's not really any reason to buy plastic tubes. Not, nothing's going to damage, like... 13 ounce canvas. And once all of this is clear, you're gonna have a lot of space to do what you need. Yeah, yeah, all this stuff's just from them working, and uh, it'll go down that hallway to a bathroom and stuff down there. But uh, And this is cute, your little kitchenette area. Yeah, right? it's you not done yet, everything. but I still got the electric kettle. You, yeah. you need to make your tea. Yeah, you know the deal. Your favorite drink is tea? Uh, I really like uh, sparkling water or like Earl Grey tea. Oh, beautiful. Just some random junk back here that's gonna get moved once when, it's all done. Now, my, on my first visit here, or actually when you first visited at the studio and stuff, I remember you brought this chest, and I was like, oh my god, what could be in it? And I was just so Did happy. I bring that? I remember seeing this before. Can, can you explain this? Because I don't even think a lot of people would have something like this. It's just this a beautiful. chest. I used to be really, really into drinking gin. And uh, it's a chest from Hendrix Gin that one of my best friends, uh, Quentin, he worked for their distribution and he got this chest for me. So it can just close up and snap lock, you know what I mean? And hmm. then it'll just pop back open. It's really nice. I, I like it a lot because I have a fuckload of supplies. So it doesn't really fit well if I have like a little tiny art bin or like a bucket or something. Like if I want to have all my cans and I want to have all my acrylic tubes, it just makes more sense out of the shelves. Yeah. I use this paint marker thing. I used to use it. I used to like keep it all filled up, but I stopped really using paint marker stuff. Oh, you don't have to prove to me you're organized. That, that takes the same. Now, this couch looks familiar. Yeah, this is your guys' couch. Our couch. This That's is not, this is your guys' old couch since uh, R.I.P. G10. Is it R.I.P. G10? Yeah. R.I.P. That, that place. I did a show there with you guys in like 2018, right? 2017. Uh -huh. Something a long yeah. time ago. A long time ago. I'm happy where we are now. Uh -huh. um, and this is like your dressing corner. Yeah, I Be figured I'd what I love, a little spot in this corner. I wasn't sure what to do with it yet, but for now. What I love is the fact that like you just have a lot of your art just everywhere already, and it's not even like the finished product. Like this is just the beginning. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'll figure out what to do with the, the space eventually. And like even these metal racks and stuff are gonna move and I'm gonna figure out what to do with them over there. But yeah, I paint on the wall and like put paintings in mine up. So this is actually like on the wall itself. Yeah, this is not and, it goes, and it goes whatsoever. even deeper. Like it goes like a foot deeper, I think. With the beautiful couch, nice. Thank you, it's uh -huh. kind of dingy. You know the deal. All right, what is your favorite corner or like section of your loft then. Once this is done, I'm hoping that this remains my favorite corner, but like wherever I can be painting will be really cool. Um, I'm gonna move this couch somewhere else and make this little cutout like where my bed's gonna go. So I really just expect that little strip back there where the kitchen is where I can like make a quick snack and have my studio space on that wall right next to where you go down to the bathroom so I can go right down there and clean up. I don't know, just it. I think that's back half is going to be the best, but I mean, for now, 
when for now, all this, this stuff's under got. construction, I can't really work on too many paintings. So for now, I sit on the couch a lot. Right now, I'm binging Ozark. So, so, so whatever show. In case show. you guys were wondering. It's a whatever show, but it'll keep you entertained. Beautiful. Well, mm -hmm. thank you for always entertaining us <laughs> and entertaining your audience. Oh, I'm all dusty. You guys don't know how dusty. Nobody even told me. You're not dusty. You're beautiful. Mm -hmm. And thank you again so much, guys, for coming to Half Past Midnight. This episode, we were so happy to see Seasons Loft. We can't wait to see more of it in the future. And we'll see what other guests we have then. You want to say anything? Um, shout out Cold God. Cold God oh, just it, released uh, their single on Days Records, which Here, is a, a song that came out a while back. Uh, it's called Moving to California in March. Uh, Where are they from? Uh, Rancho Cucamonga, California. I uh, you know, the, the boy Matt Spearhead in the thing. Uh, I got a really close bud of mine. Ducky, he's a playing bass. And uh, Cold God, you got you got to check it out. It's real shoegaze. It's that good shit. It's it's a fantastic album. Get this album. Get this one off Bandcamp. Get wherever you're selling it. Get the single. It's on Spotify. But just the singles on there, so you're gonna have to dip your toes somewhere else to get the Cold God baby. More good shit to come. Yeah, that's that's uh, yeah. I want that kind of silhouette. Oh, okay. Yeah.